Good everyone, Organus Renew. Today we have a review on the Japanese Chinu 2 Premium Tank. Now, this tank has been in my collection for a couple of years now. And it's kind of a love-hate relationship, if I was to put it simply. The, the reason for that is because, well, the main reason for that was the KV-1E spam. But now that that's died down, this tank is starting to get back into its element. Because against the KV-1E, whilst you can penetrate them, it's very hard to actually do so at longer ranges. And they'll slice right through your armour, because this thing doesn't actually have much armour, which you would expect. So the Chinu 2 is a tank that costs 1,600 Golden Eagles, if I remember off the top of my head. I, I think it's that. What, something like 1,600 or 1,300, so I know it's one of the two. And... For the price, I certainly think it's worth it. But there is a catch. It's the only battle rating 4 tank that you can get at this battle rating. And yeah, it does struggle to get a lineup sometimes. This tank does struggle. But when you get this tank going in a good position, hiding your hull, and trying to use that trolley gun mantlet, which some people still shoot it to this day, this thing can actually do some real work. So first of all, we're actually going to go over the lineup, what you, what I would suggest for this vehicle. So first of all, obviously you have the Chinu 2. A very good tank, I'll go over the shells shortly, and I'll really show what the tank can do with its shells. But first, your backup vehicles. Chaffee. Pretty self-explanatory. Every lineup should at least need a light tank in some degree or fashion. And this tank will cover it. The Chaffee is a great tank, and with it being in multiple tech trees, it should be familiar to most players. Next up, the Nato. The Nato is a very good tank destroyer. It's got a gun equivalent to the Chinu 2. It's not as good as it, but it's still good enough if you look at the penetration. And whilst it has no armor and no roof, if you position this thing well, it'll do just as good as the Chinu 2, minus taking hits. Then, for your AA support, because obviously I'm considering if you only have five crew slots like this. Your AA support will be the Soki. It's not great at its job, but it's better than nothing. And for your plane, you have quite a few choices in the form of the Key 43 Otsu with its massive, well, it's good sized bombs. You could take one of the Key 49s if you want, or if you want to slightly up to yourself, you could bring a B7A2. And any real Japanese fighter that carries 250 kilogram bombs are perfectly adequate. The bombers are perfectly adequate for the job. So really it's down to personal preference. So let's go over the armor before we continue. As you'll notice, the armor is not thick. 50 millimeters thick. This is not going to stop really anything at this BR. You might stop an AA round at long range, but about that. Well, anything higher than the 37 millimeter anti tank gun, you're not stopping. And because of that, this thing should not be played as an aggressive frontline tank. It just doesn't have the armor to brawl. The side armor is even worse at 25 to 20 millimeters thick with this part here, so you can't even angle because this will be exposed here. And with just being 24 millimeters, there's a slight chance a 50 cal round can punch through that. So you're not going to be getting the luxury of thick armor with this tank until you get to the gun mantle, but we'll cover that shortly. The rear armor is 20mm thick, and this lower part here is 85 but no one shoots there, they just shoot the arse because they want to take out the engine. The turret is where it actually might have a saving grace. The turret cupola is 50mm thick. Not bad. I mean, it's still better than... I mean, it's not as good as the front armor because the front armor has a bit of slope into it, but even so. The flat plates on the front are 50mm thick. But then as you'll notice, as we go up the gun mantle, there's several layers of 50mm plates. And even the cast around the breaching area is 50mm thick. And for some reason, people seem to shoot around about here. Now, with the volumetric changes, it may say 50mm, but they're actually hitting multiple layers of 50mm plates. Now, obviously, a Chinu 2's gun will go straight through that, but 
a lower caliber gun like a T-34-76 or a KV-1E's gun won't be able to penetrate this. And if you're hold down at distance, it's actually going to be quite hard for them to penetrate. Now there is the catch of the side of the turret being rather weak at just 25mm thick. This is a problem and overmatching can occur for the most part. The rear of the turret is also 25mm thick, and if your rear of the turret gets penetrated, there's an awful lot of ammunition here. Now, to be brutally honest, you're probably not going to survive more than a few shots in this tank unless you get lucky with a gun metal at multiple times, like I do in this battle. But otherwise, take around 30 to 40 shells. That That's the best sort of thing you can do, because then you can keep the gun going with a pretty okay reload rate, considering how cramped the turret is. But otherwise, Try to keep the rear of your turret away from your enemies, similar to how you're doing a Tiger 2, and you won't be popping like a champagne cork every match. In terms of the gun, it does have a pretty decent gun. We've got 150mm, well, 151mm of penetration, with about 80 grams of explosive. Don't really use the stock round, it does have a little bit more explosive, but losing 2mm of penetration could make the difference between penning your target and not penning your target. So I use the Type 4 Co, just because it's penetration damage is good enough anyway. And the HE round, don't even bother. If you need to take out a light vehicle, you have your 7.7s for that, which are stored on the top and in the hull of the vehicle. This gun also has pretty good elevation as well, coming to about 30 to 45 degrees above the tank. So, like I say, it's, it's not too bad in terms of a premium. It is a little slow, as you're going to see, so I'm going to be cutting us ahead of the battle a little bit, because it is a slow tank. It's not, the, it's not exactly the fastest thing in the world, but it is perfectly adequate to get it into position where you need to be. Just don't expect to be out of running anything like a T-34 or anything. So, let's get into the battle, and let's take a look in or, or more in depth. So the Chinu 2 is a bit of an old tank. I think it's been around since early 2017. And I don't see many of them. And I would really love to understand why. This tank is a really good tank. People just don't know how to play it. And that's the main thing that lets a lot of tanks down. Both on the forums and in general by player reviews. But obviously... I'm not one to just say it's a bad tank. Far from it. This tank is actually really good. And as you're going to see in a second, this gun can do some work. So I'm going to cut us ahead to 8 times speed just to get us along a little bit because this tank isn't fast. With a top speed of 24 miles an hour and only 240 horsepower in its engine, it ain't fast. Let's put it that way. So we've now arrived to my first point of conflict, and that's an M5. I line them up, and a little ship reverses right as I went to fire the shot, and me avoids the first shot. But this is where he spots me, obviously thinking, yep, I can reverse out of the way again. I'm not missing this time, buddy. Kill number one. Now, as you'll notice, we are on the northern side of Port Novorossiysk, or however you say it. And it's very common to lose on this side of the map, so don't don't expect to win on this side of the map, is all I'll say. So, yeah, don't expect anything stellar from your team on this side. Because as you can tell, we've got a lot of tank destroyers camped in, well, camped in B4, and most of the team is only just crawling out of A3. I'm one of the first tanks here, and the, the other tanks that are on my left flank, they've just died. So that gives you an idea. So at this point, I'm thinking I could try and shoot through one of these window gaps, but unfortunately the Chinu 2 is just a bit too small. It's quite a small tank, but that does work in its favour, kill number 2. Because not a lot of people are looking for this kind of tank. Now, the penetration against angled surfaces ain't great, but... That little shit right there just turned right as I fired the shot, so the MG4 actually ate it. But it still managed to penetrate and take out one of the crew members regardless. But obviously he's he's obviously very confused. I don't know if he is new to the game or whatever, but I decided let's finish him off. 
and get my third kill. And as you can tell, the enemy team have already pushed and taken Bravo. We've still got tank destroyers and even a medium tank set up there. And as you can tell, we are being swarmed. And with the tank being so small and the gun being positioned quite low in the turret, yeah, we, we can't actually shoot uh, enemy tanks that are coming through. So I put a penetrating hit to that T-34E. You're going to be seeing him in a moment. And as you can tell, the Russian players are now pushing us. They are they're trying to force the advantage. They're trying to force us to open up our flanks. And at this point, I take the daring risk of trying to flank the enemy tanks that are currently in our positions. Obviously, the T-34E that I damaged is trying to rush the cap to get a new crew member. But I spotted him. One shot straight through the side. Finished him off. Killed him before. But at this point, I'll take a hit from the rear. That is a KV-1E. I just didn't know it yet. I didn't actually spot him until he actually fired the shot because of how bushed up he is. But as you can tell, he's hitting the rear of the tank and he's also hitting the gun mantler. And whilst he has disabled the engine, he's not actually doing any damage, if you notice. So I went for a breach shot on the KV-1 didn't penetrate. I went for the driver's port, which did penetrate, taking him out for my fifth kill. I start distracting the Sherman. He hits the gun mantler, and I take him out for my sixth kill. Unfortunately, a SU-122 is about to teach me a lesson in don't piss off the Russian army, as you'll see in a moment. And there we go. That's the end of my first tank. And a heat round from that is going through your gun mantlet regardless. He wisely went for the ammunition that's stored in the lower hull, so... That's not really a stellar end to my tank, but even so. Now there is a bit of a bug with this replay. Um, the name of, obviously my own name does not show up for some reason, and also the kills that I get from now are not shown. I don't know why this is the case, but we're going to go through with it regardless. So I'm skipping ahead again just to get back into position, and we've still not got the B point, and this Panzer III player is going to get on my nerves. As you can tell, he's just blocked a potential hit on that KP-1E, which I managed to pull off regardless, but I'm going for a reload, and with this volumetric change, I was unable to put the gap, well, put the shot through the gap that I had there, which could have potentially killed the tank. But even so, Panzer III on my left pushes and gets taken out. I'm trying to score a shot, but the Panzer III again blocks as I try to push up, which I don't think he knew he was actually blocking me, to be fair, but the first time he blocked, he was just being blind as a bat, but that second time I don't think he was doing that on purpose or whatever. But obviously, as you can tell, um, there's no assist or anything like that, but I'll still point out kill increases and stuff like that, because obviously we died when we had six, and we've come back in the tank to... Well, we've, we've come back in the tank just to get more kills, because I thought... Six kills is nice and all, but let's see what else we can do. T-34-57, straight through the front plate, kill number seven. But yeah, like I say, I don't know why this replay is bugged. I can only suspect that this replay should have been killed off quite a while back, because it's had a few patches in between, and I reckon this replay is pretty much close to dead, because this replay is actually quite old. It's about two to three weeks old, and they've had a few micro patches, so I suspect that is the case. So at this point, I was getting, I was thinking about pushing towards the B point, and I was thinking of doing that. But the issue here is, is that we've got a Cromwell on the cap. They've got another light tank on the cap. Sorry, they've not got a Cromwell on the cap. It's just a Crusader. 
the Crusaders on the cap, they've got an AA to the right, and they've also got an AA just over there, that M15A1. Now I know what some people are thinking, why would I be afraid of that? The 37 can actually punch through this armour very adequately, and the Russian milk jug, which is now destroyed, can also do the same. Unbeknownst to me, however, there's actually a T-50 on my left-hand side. I just don't know it yet. And it's not before long when I actually look to my left and we will see him just... Well, we'll see him very shortly. So as this 30 pulls out, I decided he was the bigger threat. I take him out. And I attempt to use the machine gun to soften up the M15, but he turns his armor plate towards me. His gun shield is sufficient to stop the shell of more than 7.7 .7 bullet and the 75mm shell passes through doing no damage. The T-50 goes for a teammate there, I do manage to save him for kill number 9 and as you can tell this, this team is gone. I mean the enemy team's not doing great either but if that AA punches my ticket then this team is done and I thought if I can maybe sit behind and maybe try and push out if I can I might be able to try and save this team but the shell doesn't penetrate the T-34 and I'm thinking crap this team is this team's not gonna push I mean we've got a tank destroyer sat in or near their spawn and they're not really doing a lot and this is where the AA starts to try and soften me up I turn the tank to shoot the M15 and I get my 10th kill but unfortunately at this point, there's nothing I can do. I've done everything I can. The T-34 is pushing because obviously he knows I'm here. And I'm just thinking, I've got to wait for him to be distracted, which is now. And I go straight through the front plate for kill number 11. So as you can tell, this tank is very capable in good hands. Unfortunately, just don't play it on this side of the map because you will lose guaranteed. I've not had a single win from this side of the map. Let's put it that way. But it's a very good tank, it's very capable, and when you put together a decent lineup, this tank has very good capability in both up tiers and even down tiers, which you might actually get more often the lower BR vehicles you bring in. But anyway, I'm gonna let you guys off. I hope you enjoyed today's battle or review on the Chinu 2. And, well, I hope you've considered purchasing it during the upcoming sale, and I'll catch you all on the next one.